I think we're live now, Peter. D how do you say your last name? Diprinzio. Diprinzio. Oh, Prinzio. Good Italian name. Ah, it's a great Italian name. <laughs> Good Italian name. Me nice to meet you, Peter. I'm Likewise, Liam, Liam Zolo, another Zolo. fellow Italian name there. So we you. just discussed this off air that I'm a you know I'm I'm Southern, but I look Scottish. <laughs> so, That's all right. Um, it's funny though. Just to, before we start, I've I was born in England. I, and my other side of the family is Scottish. My grandparents okay. are Scottish, and then my other side of the family is all Italian. Wow. Aunties were all born there and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So wherever I go, they always say I'm from a different country. So if I go to Italy, I'll, I sound Australian. <laughs> if I go to England, I'll sound Australian. I go to I, I go to Italy, they say I look Scottish. So I'm like, I don't really know where I sort of where I am. Well, I, I mean, <laughs> Child I was, of the world. My, my parents are both Italian, um, okay. and I was born here. I'm a Newcastle boy, actually. Ah, Newcastle boy. Yeah, born and bred in Newcastle. Moved to Sydney about 20, 20 odd, 21 years ago, 22 mm. years ago. Um, but when I I go black in the sun, so mm. when I go away on holidays, I come back, I get mistaken for a Pakistani. So yeah, <laughs> some we're so children that. of the world, exactly. aren't we, Peter? Yeah, we're but, all humans. Yeah, I'm. I'm super excited about this conversation. Um, I'm Thank actually a big you. fan of yours, and Thank you. there's a there's a there's a fear inside me, and I, I think there's a fear inside some a lot of people now about uh the cancer journey and, and yes. going through it and mm. we don't we can go through sure. obviously that journey and we'll go through before but sure. you know that i have to get you on here just to have a conversation with you about it because there's mm -hmm. i don't know if you had the same fears before you had the cancer and just a bit of a background you survived terminal cancer is that correct uh, that's right i mean there was a fear if you remember Liam, i mean i'm probably a little bit older than you but um 30 40 years ago and i remember coming from a european background you you'd be scared to say the word cancer, mm. um, you know the C word because it's such a you know negative thing. But today, because it's um, one in three get diagnosed with cancer, back 30, 40 years ago, it was one in something like thirty or forty. I mean, that's wow. how much things have changed. Yeah. But of course, I had the fear, you know, because my father got diagnosed from can uh, sorry, got diagnosed with cancer and actually passed away. Oh no. Yeah, and uh, my mother died. Diagnosed with cancer, she's still alive. Yeah. And, um, my sister was diagnosed with multiple sclerosis. She's in yeah. a wheelchair, and I'm the fourth in the family. I've got diagnosed with terminal cancer. Oh, yeah. So yeah. So. And what type of cancer was it then? Mo uh, multiple myeloma. It's a bone marrow cancer. Okay. And it's part of the leukemia uh, yeah. family. That's you know, part. Of, it comes from blood disorder. Yeah. And uh, but I never, I, I never knew. I've been always fit and played soccer all my life. Been Italian. Yeah. And um. And it all started in 2014 uh, when I was doing pre-season training in February. And I just thought I had a sore back and I thought I'd tweak my back and, you know, and I was in so much pain. And I think I went for about three or four months. And I'm, and I'm thinking, is it nerve? Is it muscle? And one day I just got up and said, you know, I need to go to the doctors mm. and to see if I need physio or chiropractic. I didn't mm. know, so I'll find out. And pretty much that's how the journey started. Oh, really? Me. Yeah. They, got, they found that I had a a hole in the bottom of my spine, and that was where the pain was coming from. Mm. And the tests showed that it was the bone marrow cancer that started it, and, and off you go. And what, what was that? What was your initial thought then when you first found out? Well, it's interesting, um, and you, you know, during this um, interview, you'll hear why I, I had such a positive mindset when I was diagnosed because of my past, and we'll get into that. But mm. when I was, it was funny because when I was, I went to get the, the scans done, and the gentleman that when he finished the scans, he said to me, um, when are you supposed to be seeing your doctor? And I said to him, I said, oh, he said, come tomorrow, next day, doesn't matter, and I'll go through it. He goes, well, look, um, my suggestion is you go back right now because I'm sending through the results. And that's all he said to me. Yeah. So I knew that there was something that wasn't right. But mm -hmm. you know what? I, I thought to myself, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm a believer. And this is my message I, I teach people. Don't react. Respond to circumstance. Yeah. So I didn't react. I thought, you know, whatever it is, it is. I'll face it. Mm. Um. Pretty much got diagnosed. They told me, they said, Look, this is what you have. You have we noticed there's a hole in the bottom of your spine. We can send you for further tests. And they did. And I had about three and a half hours of MRI scans, blood tests. I mean, anything you can think of, I had done. Mm. And they raced me straight to Westmead Hospital, cancer ward there. It was on Thursday, July. And um, it was, I think it was the 23rd or 22nd. And I just remember that night at 7 o'clock, the oncologist came in with two doctors and he had a, a clipboard with the, the paperwork and he said, look, um, this is a diagnosis. You have a certain amount of time to live. Tell me straight. 
you have multiple myeloma. He explained what the bone marrow cancer was. He said, you have lesions, which is like tumors, all over your body except your hands and feet. He had some scans with him, and you won't be able to walk um, while you're in hospital. And the period of time you've got left, we're going to try and get you to walk after we have a, do an operation, put steel rods in your legs, mm. all these things. And I remember I, I just looked at him, and I said to him, I smiled, and I said, look, doctor, with all due respect, uh, that piece of paper is not going to tell me what I can, what I can't do. It's not mm. going to happen. Mm. I'm going to beat this with my mind mm. and everything I've got. And he looked at me, and as if to say, what are you talking about? Oh, do you understand? And I just said to him, I will beat this. Anyway, he left. He said, I'll be back tomorrow. And I had my partner at the time, and she grabbed my hand. And she started to cry, and she's saying to me, do you understand how serious this is? I mean, did you hear what the doctor said? Mm. Like, are you in denial? And I remember this is what I said to her. I said, listen, if I accept what they tell me, my body will react to what is planted in my subconscious and I will die mm. from cancer. Mm. I am not going to accept a thing he said. I'm going to visualize tonight. I'm going to start um, using law of attraction tonight. I'm going to start the power of prayer tonight. I'm going to power of positive thinking tonight. I'm going to start right here. The, you know, long story short, after two weeks, it's on video, I started to walk, no operation. And that year, the 14th of December, 2014, just under six months later, um, they couldn't find any, they did blood tests, they couldn't find any cancer, they did blood tests, test again, couldn't find any cancer. Right. Here I am, over four and a half years later. Oh, man. So that's people so... ask me, what did you do? I mean, yeah. what is it that you did? Look, you know what, Liam? I, I, I spent a month in hospital, and I started to Google people around the world that beat terminal cancer mm. and started to read. And one thing, and I can, and I hope you don't mind, I will be a bit controversial here. Mm. Maybe for another day we can discuss this. But my question to the oncologists and doctors and authorities and governments is this. Why are we using the two biggest cancer-causing treatments? Radiation, which gives you cancer, mm. and chemo, which is, which is poison, toxic poison, injected into your veins to cure cancer. Is it true that it's only like 30% success rate anyway, or is it lower? It's that? much lower. See, Why Liam, let me tell you, I did my research. Mm. Out of 10 people have cancer, terminal cancer. Mm. Eight out of 10, and maybe even nine, but eight out of 10... It's not the cancer that kills them. It's a secondary mm. disease. See, I ended up because... See, what happens is when they give you chemo, I mean, they poison your body. They actually put putting poison into your veins. Hence why you lose your hair, mm. you vomit, you know, it's, so you can imagine. Mm. It's actually poison. Mm. So what happens? Your immune system goes pretty much down to zero. But they say, oh, yeah, but, you know, but they kill the cancer cells. Well, it does, but it kills everything inside, mm. even your, your, your good cells to fight it. So what happens is you get, I end up getting golden staff twice. Wow. Yeah. So if I would have passed away whilst I was doing, you know, at the beginning, because I stopped everything, but whilst I was doing, the people would have said, oh, poor guy had cancer, he died from cancer, because that's what everyone says. Mm. Now, you know, there's a lot of people without, I'm not going to mention names, but that we know celebrities have died from cancer. They say, oh, they've been battling cancer five years, 10 years, 20 years, and they died. Well, it wasn't the cancer. It's the, it was either a, a pneumonia or, or other things they died from because their immune system is zero. Mm. Now, my research shows this. The only thing that can cure an illness or disease is your immune system. That's it. And you've got to build up your immune That's how you can overcome disease. You... I have a saying, you're not sick because you have cancer. You have cancer because you're sick. Mm. Now, why did I get cancer? Because, you know, and we'll get into that, is because of what had happened four or five years earlier. Stress can trigger off a cancer cell in your body. Everyone has a cancer cell. Everybody. You know, running around, moving around your body, but something will trigger that off, whatever it may be. Some don't. Some go through their whole life because the immune system or whatever it is. And what do you think you... Triggered your one off. Well, in two thousand and seven, um, my I was married at the time, had a baby daughter, and my ex wife left me, took my daughter, pretty much took everything away from me, and I went downhill. And I ended up um, I had a beautiful property, and I ended up um, sort of losing that my business. I went down to seven dollars to my name. Um, then she 
was having, you know, went with the man. She was having an affair. Um, they left Sydney, took my daughter. I didn't end up seeing my daughter. And by the way, that was in 2007, 2008. And I still haven't seen my daughter in all these years. Yeah, so she was about three at the time. Now she's about 14. And um, so what happened was I went, I, um, I went downhill very quick. I got diagnosed with, uh, with um, clinical you know, depression. And we can talk about that later, but depression. And then in March 2008, I, tr I wanted to end my life. So I parked the car, went, uh, went into a suburb, I parked the car, I wrote a suicide note with a photo of my daughter, and I took 75 tablets. Yeah, 75 tablets. And, um, and I remember, this is the interesting part, I remember that um, I, I put the seat down in the car, and I just remember, I, I do believe in God, and I said, God, forgive me. You know, I, I can't do this anymore. I can't stand the pain, the emotional pain. I just need to end my life. Mm. I'm sorry. And I'm laying there, and, I'm, and, and I remember, uh, you know, I started to feel this tingling all over my body, and I thought then and there, talking about fear, that's when I started to get scared because I knew that that was it. Like, I can't go back now. I'm about to die. And that's all I remember. And then I could hear this, like this knocking. And I remember opening my eyes, and there was a policeman at the, at the window, and he said to me, can you please put your window down? So I put the window down, and he put his hand on my right shoulder. And this is exactly what he said. He said, are you okay, sir? And I remember saying to him, oh, I think so. And he said, listen, I need you to keep smiling and be happy. Will you promise me that? And I remember looking at the policeman. I said, sure. He goes, but do you, do you promise me? I said, sure. He goes, good. Keep smiling. Now, I saw him get in his highway patrol and took off. Now, here's the interesting part. When I put the seat up, I looked at the time on the dashboard, four hours and 20 minutes had gone by. I thought it was just like 15, 20. Yeah. It wasn't. Over four hours. And then when I looked in the revision mirror, my eyes were as black as this microphone. That was for the drugs. Yeah. So there was a the question is, there was a suicide note, a photo of my daughter, empty drug containers. My eyes were black. Obviously, I must have been violent from all, because I took... There was about 10 or 15 sleeping tablets, Panamax, Zoloft, because I was, you know, under pressure. I mean, Panadine 4, I took it all. Mm. So you can imagine what my body I was reacting to. it, And he did not ask me once about what I do or anything. So my belief is that he had to do it. He's, all he had to do was wake me up. Yeah. I believe he had to just wake me up. And, and I think through all what I went through, you know, going pretty much broke and, and you know, suicide attempt and um, I had just lost my father from cancer and my ex leaving me and not seeing my daughter. I think four years later it triggered off. Well, mm -hmm. it actually was the process. And then July 20, 2014, it just, my mm -hmm. body, you know, showed it. So I think that's what, what caused it. Because up to then, I was fine. Never sick, don't drink, don't smoke, you know, never took any type of drug. So... Uh, you know, that's what my belief is. And do my research, I, I absolutely believe that. And so your research that you've... It, there's no one better to have any research, really. Someone who's gone through it themselves. Exactly right. Does your research show that, like, for your own mindset, do you believe that it could be, you know, uh, actually your mindset? Could it be nutrition? Is it exercise? Is it too much alcohol? Or is it, like, someone's mindset's you know, going down a negative way, so they turn to alcohol, which then is a flow-on effect, which causes the cancer or something like that. Well, yeah, what look, do you think? Absolutely. Look, I, you know, getting a bit more into it, my research shows that not just the cancer, anything in life, but let's talk cancer, total cancer, your mindset is 80%. If you want to beat it, 80%. That's how important your mindset is. Because if you give up, well, the body's going to react to that mm. in your subconscious. See, my, my seed at the time was, no, there's no way. I'm going to have a purpose to live, a purpose to wake up tomorrow morning and the next morning and the next morning. And that was it. You know, interesting part of me, let me quickly, just to show you how the, how the mind and how powerful it, it is. I, that year, um, even though I was playing soccer, I was also coaching an under 13 soccer team. And we played winter. We were in July, so we were probably about four to five games away um, till the end of the season, and we were fourth on the ladder. 
So a couple of more games we would have won. We would have probably ended up fourth or third in getting the semis and grand finals, mm-hmm. and we played this country. Well, what happened? I got diagnosed and went into hospital. Then the manager, um, who was my partner at the time, said to the parents and, the, and to my 16 players, look, this is what's happened. He's got terminal cancer. He hasn't got long to live, and he won't be coming back. So what happened was they lost their, the last five games, and they got they missed out. Mm. They were devastated. So she came in. My, my partner came into the hospital, and she had a, an iPhone. Every player left a, like a twenty second message to me at the end of the last game. Some of them were crying, and yeah, and that was the first time that I actually got emotional. And when I saw that, and they gave me a soccer ball all signed, and I'm a Liverpool fan in England, mm. they signed it. I remember I said, you know what? No way. I'm going to get out of here, and when I do and I'm fit, I'm going to coach again. Mm. And whatever team I'm going to coach, I'm going to get to the grand final. It's a purpose. And do you know, that's exactly what I kept visualising. That was in 2014. Mm. 2017, last year, First year I coached, I said to the players at the preseason, this is my story, boys, and this is what I'm going to do. Do you know, we got to the grand final and we won. Did you? We missed that by minor premise by about two points. Yeah. And that was it. I just wanted to prove a point. Yeah. But this year, 2018, I had this urge at the end of the season, let's prove to the to people that what I'm preaching, what I'm, my message, it's not just... A coincidence. I'm going to coach again. The same thing happened in March, pre-season. I said, guys, not only are we going to get to the grand final and win this year, we're going to become minor premiers. And guess what? We can become minor premiers and grand finals. And we won. Mm. And then I ended up getting coached in year two by the club. So it just shows you that the mind is very powerful. Yeah? That, yeah. That's the thing. So to answer your question, the mindset is very important in any type of can- well, with cancer. Your mindset. If your attitude's right, mm-hmm. the rest will follow. But then after that is obviously lifestyle, what you eat, of course. I mean, if I was to have macas every day in KFC, you know, it's 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 not good. You, you are what you eat. You know, the old yeah. saying. Yeah. And it, it's just interesting to me. It's like, is it is it the fact that it's just the food, or and I might have mentioned it already. So is it the is it the alcohol, or is it the fact that you're in a, that mindset already? Yeah, you're already in that negative frame of mind. You're already going down that path. You already lost belief, or and then that you know that that stress or whatever it is lowers your immune system. Then you're starting to you know try and you know, have have things that yes help you in your life that you mm-hmm. think help you to release the pain, like the drugs and the alcohol. Yeah. And then you have those diseases. I just right. find which one is it, the chicken or the egg? Is well, it? Well, yeah. you know, I mean, look at today. As I said to you, 30, 40 years ago, it was one in. 40, 50, or 60, whatever it is, would get, you know, a type of cancer, you know. Um, now it's one in three, and it's going to be one in two in the next 10, 15 years. Why? Well, I know the food industry is not going to like me, but mm. it, it, it does come down to what we eat, drink, smoke, mm. everything. Look, someone once said to me, if you're going to have a Coke, a can of Coke, and I, I don't drink fizzy because of the sugar, mm. because cancer and sugar, they love each other. Really? Oh, yeah, they love each other. So white sugar is a no-no. So anybody out there, you know, just cut out sugar. Yeah. You should do it anyway. But it's not that I don't have sugar. I'll have a coffee like I did downstairs, yeah. but I have organic raw sugar, like a, a, a teaspoon. That's what it. about, like, fruits and, and Fru- Okay, bread. this is where the myth is. People pasta, the talent. Well, okay, <laughs> look, pasta with carbohydrates, yeah. but, I mean, that, that's fine. As long as you don't have it at 10 o'clock at night and you go to sleep. Yeah, exactly. So, right. you know, you have it you know, at lunchtime for your coffee, but don't late at night. That's what a lot of, you know, they, they're going into having pasta and bread, and then yeah. they go to sleep. Yeah. But a, a professor told me this. He said, if you're going to have a can of Coke, if that's what you need, mm. don't have Diet Coke. You know, don't, just have full, just have the full Coke. Yeah. Because if you read on the back of what Diet Coke or Diet Pepsi or any diet type drinks, read the list of things they put in there. Mm. Most of us don't. They just go, oh, Diet Coke, no sugar, oh, you know, I'm going to the gym, I want it, and they drink it. But, they don't realise by drinking that over a period of time, it will it will and it may trigger off that cancer cell yeah. or have a, some type of other illness. Mm. It's just the rubbish they put in there. Yeah. You know, I mean, think about it. Even like, and I'm sorry for the people that, that do take sugarine and, mm. and, and, and those sweeteners, don't. Mm. If you have a look what's in there and you research 
what that particular chemical what it does to your body, I'm guarantee you'll never do it, you'll never touch it again. What is it, aspiratum? That's usually oh, all that aspiratum? sort of stuff. And yeah. there's, I can't even pronounce. I, yeah. I, looked, you know, I left school at, you know, when I was 15, yeah, so yeah. I hate school. But yeah, uh, but you research it. I mean, that's a good thing about iPads. You carry mm. it and you, and you Google it, but it, it's a no-no. You know, it's a no-no. And, and to be honest, chicken. Now, a lot of these fitness fanatics and that, in the pro, they have a lot of chicken. Yeah. Now, chicken is probably the thing that causes a lot of our issues. Really? A hundred percent. Shit. I'm because, not chicken every day. Well, yeah, because everyone thinks they don't have red meat. They have me. chicken. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, no. Because if you understand now, yeah. back years ago, look, I'm 56, and I'm talking 30, 40 years ago, when we used to have chicken, or into, it was a different taste to what it is today, mm. especially chicken. Why is chicken today? Because of, of, of demand and, and, and society and pressure. They get a baby chicken and they start injecting it with hormones mm. and still just to make it grow quicker so they can turn it over. What about hormone free chicken? Is that well, that's what they bullshit? say, but it's bullshit. It I mean, it's like you know, it's like um, Coles and Woolies saying, you know, like um, healthy, you know, organic stick or uh, uh, yeah. bar or whatever. Yeah. And you have a look at the amount of sugar is in there, yeah. So, I mean, it's all advertising marketing, so that's what you've got to do your yeah. own research. I mean, it's funny because once it's like myself, when you terminal cancer or get diagnosed, you start to look at everything you eat yeah. and do a lifestyle. But it, 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 food has a lot to do with it. So what, what do you recommend? Look, to... uh, my in, in just in general, you look, uh, d don't get me wrong. Mm. I mean, if I you know, go for a drive and I'm going to a trip or whatever and I pull, I'm hungry, I'll have an apport, a Porto's roast chicken. Don't, don't yeah. think that I, I, but I've cut so right back. Yeah. Yeah. Like for what I used to, like you said, every day because you, no, I've cut right back, yeah. right back. Um, try and have organic. I mean, not that I'm saying it makes it. I don't know, but but you know, these, I see. I watch tradies that every day they go to Macca's, you know, and have a big can, a big Coke, and mm. you have that every day. They might look fit because they might, but are they in, in inside? And then, and then they're going having these protein powders. Don't get me started on protein powders. Fitness, fitness. I will never touch them. Twelve years of PT. I don't take. Everyone used to ask me what supplement sh should you take, and I always used to say, you don't need any supplementation unless you have a deficiency in something. Thank you. And the reason why I I learned a valuable lesson because I went to a, uh, a doctor, mm -hmm. and he said to me, I, I try and go once every year to get a blood test. Yes. Uh, I don't know if that's it's just my own mindset. I, maybe because I wor I worry too much about cancer, and that's probably and then that worry leads me to worry about reducing my immune system which is even worse that's right so i'm like fuck i need to just stop like stop for a second sometime <laughs> but I, I went to the doctor and to get a blood test to see how i'm going he said you, your protein levels are too high you're a fitness guru get off the protein shakes i'm like i don't even have protein shakes i don't even have it so he goes you must be metab uh, yeah. i don't know maybe too much chicken i don't know what it was but it just goes to show that how marketed we are to say that right. someone in the 12 years of, of in the fitness industry doesn't take any supplementation and protein powders has been told by a doctor to reduce my protein levels. What are those people doing when they have the protein shakes three times a day? That's right. It, it's, see, they get, because we're, it's a, it's a um, what do you call it, we're brainwashed with these supposedly experts that have never gone through mm. You know, and, and they, you know, protein shakes and doing this and doing that, and you know, have Diet Pepsi, you've got a little Coke, and it's no, it's, it's just a no, no. Mm. I mean, have a look. I remember in high school, the boys and the girls back at, you know, 20, 30, 40 years ago to what they look like today. Mm. I mean, have a look at some of the old, even some of the old athletes, soccer players back 30 years ago to what they are today. You know, the shape and the mm. women because of what we're eating. Yeah. That's all it is. It's not that they go to the gym. Mm. It's what we eat that is making the women with their, with their breasts and, and the mm. men with their, it's just, it's our food. Mm. It's our food. And you watch. The average person will watch a cricket and a football or whatever it is, and, and you'll see a KFC buy pizza, Domino's. Yeah. And they're, they're, it's in your face. It's in your face all the time. So if the demand's high for it, but there's a demand that's high for smoking, but they tax that. You know, people love smoking, don't they? So they start taxing that. Why can't they tax these foods? Well, you know, cigarette companies were – the Winfield Cup was the rugby league yeah, know, one for many right. years. Yeah. So then they know that. Right. Like there's tax on, on Winfield – uh, cigarettes. Yeah. So why the f excuse my swearing? Why the fuck can't we have taxation on Pizza Hut, 
KFC, McDonald's and those sorts of things as well, just to show how bad they are. Do you know what, Liam? I think putting a tax on, on which I did with cigarettes, and how much is a pack of cigarettes now? $30, 40 Yeah, $20, $30. Yeah, some like of the, the bigger ones. Mm. It's not going to stop anyone. Because mm. I, I, what I do now, I do a lot of one-on-one with people that are going through depression, suicide mm. thoughts, and all these things because of my journey. Mm. Um, I, I, I go to schools. I do year 10, 11, 12, and I talk about... Um, suicide, bullying, you know, depression. Yeah. And it's interesting, the ones that smoke or drugs or drink, it's it's not that they, it, it's, it's, what's the word? You know, especially smokers, it's like, oh, it's just a habit. Mm. Like sometimes I don't even realise I'm lighting it up. Um, drinking drugs is like, oh, because my mates and I don't want to look uncool not doing it. Um, so it's not, the tax not going to stop it. I tell you what's going to stop it is, is, is knowledge and getting to the people while they're young. Mm. See, I, I, I said to the government, so I'm trying to get into schools and, and trying to... See, I don't have an issue, you know, like they just got the HSC results, and that's great. Mm. But who's teaching these young young adults that when they're out in the real world, and, and you know where I'm coming from, in the real jungle, mm. what happens when you face a problem, an adversity, an illness, or, or from it, anything? Who's teaching Who taught you how to overcome it? Mm. Okay, I was self-taught because of what I went through. But these, who's teaching? That's why my, I'm saying to the government, you know what, in 20, 30 years' time, these young kids are going to be our future politicians, leaders, doctors, scientists. If we don't get their mindset right now, we're going to have a big problem, not even Australia, around the world. Because depression's increased. Well, depression, but what's depression? See, I'm sorry, some people are going to get upset with yeah. this, but I'm telling you, depression... Is a 21st century myth about yeah. making money. Yeah, because okay. what's depression? People yeah. say it's a mental disease. No, it's not. It's not a mental disease. Mm. I was dying, I was clinically diagnosed with depression, mm. but guess what? What does that mean? When you hear I'm clinically diagnosed, well, he must have it's, it's been diagnosed. Well, guess what? They, they can't do a blood test, mm. they can't do a scan, an MRI on, on depression. Mm. This is what they do. This is exactly what they do. I'm the doctor, this is my surgery. Let you come to me and I'm going to ask you some questions. And I'm going to ask to the, to the listeners and everyone the same thing. Mm. And you think about this. Have you ever had heart amputation? Yes, yeah. I have. Have you sometimes got up in the middle of the night, one, two o'clock in the morning, tossing and turning, can't go back to sleep because you're, you're thinking about something? Yes. Do you sometimes um, in the morning don't want to wake up and face the world, you just want to stay in bed because there's a... Yes. Do you, if you have a business and, and, and you have a phone call on your mobile, it's a private number, you know the creditors might be after you. Do you sometimes want to answer it and you start the back? Yes, 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 yes. Guess what? You have, yeah, now you are clinically diagnosed with depression. Mm. Here's Zoloft. Yeah. Now, is it a mental disease? No, it's not. It, I'll tell you what depression is. It's a reaction from your body to your mind of a past or present circumstance. Mm. There's something in your life that has happened and you've reacted to it. Yeah. That's what depression might be. Why was I diagnosed? Well, because my ex left me. Mm. You know, took my, I lost my house. I went down to $7. I was, there was my depression. Yeah. Now, I've had people that have had massive depression, wanted to commit suicide. One guy I, I had an interview with here just up the road here, and he was going to jump off the, off the gap. But he wanted to see me before he did it because... And you know what? It was a financial pressure. And as soon as I said to him, listen, John, if I write you out a check right now for two, three million, not that I'm saying not two, three million, but yeah, yeah. I'm saying to him, if I did, would that save you? Would that stop you? You know what? He started to change mm. because he was reacting to circumstances mm. and I got him to respond. So everyone that goes through depression, and I've spoken to so many, nearly 100% would be they, they have something in their life that they either haven't been able to talk to someone, you know, the old saying just, are you okay? Because you'll find if you go to someone, you know that they're down, and you just say to them, hey, Lynn, are you okay? Mm. Most of the time they'll break down, start to cry, and then they'll open up. Mm. Depression is not a mental disease. There is mental disease out there. There's literally, there are people with schizophrenia and all that sort of stuff. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about the word depression. Mm. And, I'm, and I hate that the world... The society and government are telling us, you know, you hear a, a footballer, something, they go, oh, yeah, life fine for you. No. Why are we doing that? Mm. Let's get to the, you know, what do they say? It's 
it's not about curing something because it doesn't exist. Mm. But make them aware that you are reacting and your body reacts to how you feel. Mm. I know that for a fact. And if you can get them to change that mindset, we'll find that a lot of bullying, suicide, depression, depression will not exist. Yeah. It will be minimised. You know, and you meet people like me and there's others out there trying to change the mindset of people. And I think that you're completely right. There's there's got to be, like we work on skills and drills in sport. That's right. We work on skills and drills in business, but there's no skills and drills for mindset preparation for circumstances right. that happen like that. That's and right. I was lucky enough to, I went to a workshop one time. And this is just after my partner, my ex-partner left me Mm -hmm. after five and a half years. She just walked in and just said, oh, we're done. And I spiraled into that that mindset. When did this workshop? And then they said to me, yeah, that mindset. Um, And and I went to this workshop and they, they said, okay, pick a circumstance in your life that's a negative one. And then talk to you, talk to someone in this workshop about it. So you're one-on-one, me and you are talking about it. So they sort of talk about it from a victim mentality. That wasn't your fault. It was her It was her fault. So I'd sit there and I'd go, look, yeah, she left. She's walked in one day. She left me. And this is my mindset around it. Uh, actually, previous to going to this workshop, she left me. I don't even know what I did. Like, she just walked in. How, how, like, what, what do I do to deserve something like this? Why me? Like, that that victim mentality that's right um and then they said okay stop after a minute i could have kept going for like 10 15 minutes if like that and i was almost bubbling up by just having that ex- you know just expressing myself around it and then they said okay now you've got another minute to tell your partner that it was your responsibility that you made that situation her breaking up with you happen right. it was your it was your fault responsibility right. and i sat there and i'm like well, i just i couldn't speak i'm like um well, I guess, like, thinking about it, six months previous to that, you know, I stopped paying attention to her. Um, I stopped doing the small things, you know, taking her out for a drink, having date nights, and then it just started spiraling. I'm like, shit, I'm responsible for this, That's just as much as her. That's right. You know, yeah. these situations that come up, is that exactly what you said, these these uh, these actions that are ca- happening as a consequence, every action has an equal or opposite reaction, doesn't it? 100%. It was my fault as well as hers. And yeah. in every situation that comes up now, I, I remember that. Like, okay, am I falling victim to this present circumstance that's coming up or am I going to have the ability to respond? Because that's what responsibility means. Thank you. That's, Has that that's ability exactly. to respond. That's right. That's right. Well, my message I said to you earlier, yeah, I'm teaching people to say don't react, mm. respond to circumstances. Yeah. Don't react. React is a negative thing. Mm. You know, when you react to something, and that's where his sports commentators, they say, oh, you know, they lost last week. We'll see what their reaction is this week. Mm. Well, and I was a coach too, and as a mentor, as a wife coach, as a speaker, I say to people, no, you respond to whatever happens. Mm. Respond. Mm. That is a long-term positive thing. Reaction is just an instant, I'm reacting. Yeah, you respond. throw a punch, I'll throw a punch. Yeah, that's reacting. Yeah. But responding means that's okay. Mm. Cool. You want to throw another one? Yeah. You, know, you respond to things. Yeah. That's what, see, being a victim, and that's why I, I'm, I'm sick and tired of hearing that some guy that, that, that is charged for rape or or, or, or something, and then the, the, the solicitor, I understand the solicitor's acting for their client, but they go in and say, but he had a bad past in upbringing, and you know, they get a reduced amount. Or, or, you know what? It's, it, that really upsets me because... I'm living proof that if I was supposed to, put, if that was real, then I was, I'm the victim here. I mean, suicide, depression, terminal cancer. My father died from cancer. My sister, MS. My mother got cancer. Going broke. Um, even back 30 odd years, and I, you know, we we'll go back. Um, as I was saying, that you know, that I have got a past. I even did. I even went to jail. Did you? I did jail. Yeah, I didn't kill anyone, rape anyone. It was yeah. uh, it was a it was an investment that went wrong and yeah. duty of care and you know that, that sort of thing. That was yeah. about thirty odd years ago. Yeah. You know, and I you know I ended up doing time because uh, you know the, the advice I gave was wrong at the time yeah. because what happened is it was eighty excuse me eighty five eighty six that's how far back. Yeah. And then I particular investments. Yeah. And and some of my family, you know, my future in laws and that. And then in eighty seven November we had a massive crash. And wiped out pretty much all their money, 
And because they asked me to put in a, a more of a conservative fit, and I said, no, nah, this one's only more money. That's what I ended up doing. And anyway, so so I've been, I've done it all. Mm. That's why I can sit in front of young people. And then when I share my story, that hey, I did time. Mm. You know, I, I had I went through depression. I was diagnosed with terminal cancer. I, I mean, I went through it all, guys. So uh, there's nothing that you can sit in front of me that I don't understand because I've been there. Mm. Now I can put my hand up at 56 and say, why me? Why me? But you know what? Here's the story. 21. I was 21 at the time. And in fact, the whole company, we came to Sydney to watch a motivational seminar, an all-day motivational seminar. And there were some great speakers, and I don't know if you know any of these, but there was a guy by the name of Dr. Norman Vincent Peale. I've heard of Yeah, him. he wrote the book, The Power of Positive Thinking. Yeah. A guy by the name of Zig Ziglar. I know Zig Ziglar, yeah. Tom Hopkins, Alan Peace, Og Mendina. Yeah. These guys were all on one day. Wow. And I remember at, at 6 o'clock, walking out of the Horton Pavilion, I said to my boss, wow, I want to be like these guys. I want to be a speaker. Mm. Now, at 21, I planted that seed. But this is what my boss said to me. He said, you know what, Pete? You can be one of the great ones, but let me give you some advice. Some of the greatest speakers and highest paid speakers on earth have a good story to tell. Now, that's all he said to me. Now, when he said that at 21, I'm thinking, oh, yeah, most of these guys, they got on and they said a joke and broke the ice. I'm thinking that's what he means. I've got to come up with a good story. Mm. I didn't realize that 30 years of my apprenticeship and what I had to go through to have a story to get up on stage and share my story. Mm. Who thought at 21 I was going to go through jail, broke, divorce, suicide attempt, you know, terminal cancer, all the, who knew that? But that was part of, you know, obviously that was part of the plan, part of my apprenticeship. Mm. And, uh, and now I'm telling the world, guys, never give up, because that's, that's my logo, my thing, never give up, NV, GVUP, never give up. Mm. That's on my number plates. Um, and, and never give up, no matter what. Whatever you may face in life, don't give up. Yeah. Because tomorrow will be one step closer to what you work today, to what your dream is. Yeah. Once you give up, that's what... See, the difference between a loser and a winner is that the loser gave it one more shot. Mm. And that's by not giving up. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, everything's mindset. Everything in life is mindset. Marriage, business, uh, sport, athlete, whatever, everything's mindset. You hear some of these greatest athletes, you hear them talk about visualisation and believing and seeing themselves crossing that line and, and winning and holding it. That, that's, that's all part of mindset. Mm. If you see yourself down and out and failing, well, that's what's going to happen. That's yeah. the law of attraction. That's the law of attraction. I was in bed at Westmead, you know, sick and, and being told I wasn't going to live and long and, and I was visualising that one day I would be on stage sharing my story four and a half years ago. Wow. And that's what I do. I live my dream today. Yeah. You know, so um, it's great. You know, I do interviews like this and, yeah. you know, I just, I get asked, I'm, I've been asked to go overseas, but at the moment I haven't been able to go. Um, I'm writing a book called Never Give Up. Mm -hmm. So um, it'll, be, it'll be released next year. I think you're so on the money with this power of visualisation. A lot of the, as you mentioned, a lot of the sports stars always oh. mention it. Yeah. They always mention something. But, and I, even this room, even without you even knowing, I've I've pictured myself in this room with four microphones having an interview with yourself because I missed out when I uh, mean Sheena Bondi don't, Radio. yeah, Bondi yeah. Radio, I mean Sheena uh, don't host this together. But I had this vision of sitting here going, I want to come back, I want to interview. Peter, because I missed out last time, yeah. and those sorts of things, I guess what I'm trying to say is that we have 66 million thoughts more now coming through our head every any given one day. That's right. How do you know the visualization, because a lot of visualizations come up, you know, some sure. sexual, some whatever, like, you know, <laughs> mostly <laughs> like, sexual. Like, like, <laughs> no. yes. but, you know what I mean? Yeah, they, you you have all these pictures inside of our brains because we remember in pictures. How do you know which one is the one to focus on? Is it the one that just shoots back? Like, how, is there some tip you can give me or people? Because there's other visualization techniques I've done that haven't come off. So why did this one come off? Is it because it's more important to me? Well, because this was your purpose. This is what your passion. See, I, I said to my soccer team, I said, guys, throw your heart over the bar. Doesn't matter how high it is and your body will follow. Mm. 
Now, that's like, so the principle of that, that is this. What you see and believe in your mind and you believe in your heart, you will achieve. It's that simple. Mm. So you obviously, this was your passion. Yeah. You know, the, the girls, whatever. It's, it's just, you know, like that's just a, a making just you a feel good, make you feel for, good the, yeah. for the few minutes or whatever yeah, it is. Yeah. But this is your passion. See, to me, it was to be on stage and speak. And I, I wanted that at 21. Mm. And here I am, 56, now living my dream. So people think the dreams come, you know, overnight. It doesn't. It takes time sometimes. Mm. But it will happen. Yeah. So... What you predominantly, I mean, have you ever seen The Secret? You know, the yeah, I've seen The okay. Secret. So, uh, you know, I've seen a few times and read the book. So, it's exactly right. What you predominantly think and feel, it will happen, manifest. Mm. Bad or good. Yeah. So, yeah, I get a lot of, I mean, there's a lot of things, oh, wow, yeah, but it's what you mainly focus on. And my focus is my mission and my passion is to, to help people, to be a speaker, to be an international speaker. And that's where your energy, and that's where it will manifest more than just saying, "Oh, you know, whatever, a girl or something else." Or, but but everything I've got, everything I've got, me to answer your question, everything from my watch to what I drive to to things I will get is is I've written it down. Mm -hmm. I've got it. That's that's the other thing too. So if you want um, a method or, um, or something that a principle is, if you want what you write down and you and you visualize that. If it's a, a red Ferrari spider, or if it's a spider, make sure you put a spider convertible. If it's not, put a coupe. Red Mustang. Red Mustang. 1967. 67. Black wheels. What is that? Yeah. You've got to write that down. Don't, you've got to put convertible. Everything, right down to the color, to the wheels, the number to the. Plate. Even visualizing your number plate. Yeah. That's right. Exactly right. Because when I was diagnosed with terminal cancer, I visualized that where I'll be standing. How I'll be discussing it. And that was even before I was even, they couldn't find any cancer. And that will manifest. Do you know what? I'm not here to preach. Please mm. understand that. I'm not here to preach. Mm. But even biblical story of Jesus, when he says to his 12 apostles, which I believe he was the, he was the sales manager, the apostles were the, were the salespeople, he said, teach the world that what when you pray, Pray believing that you've already received and it should be done unto you. There's a law of attraction. There's mm. a secret. Mm. So Jesus knew then 2,000 years ago the secret. Mm. When you pray, believing you've already received, it will be done unto you. What does that mean? Already seeing it, it, visualizing it, yeah. it's going to happen. Yeah. But believing it, believing it. If you, don't, if you only hope, it's not going to happen. And I think that something just came up for me then. And I don't know where I heard this from one of the greats as well. Motion leads to emotion or emotion leads to motion. And visualization, like even then when you said picture the tires, I'm like, oh, I'm getting excited about the white trim with, you know, black tire, white trim. And then I'm like, oh, I've got the number plate. I can see it's like black with like maybe gold on the front. And it That's just it. gets you excited about it. Thank you. And, it's, and then it's almost like a mind tricking but simultaneously, and where does it come into the fact that where it's, I know this is really deep, but where it's spirituality and where it's actually just a mind trick? No, no. Oh, look, I do. both. Well, it's both. What's and the I, difference, I, I believe, I guess? like, I mean, you look around at the universe, the world, and, and when you hear about things, there's no way that this just happened, you know, some people say, you know, it's just the Big Bang Theory. I mean, it's just impossible. Well, it caused the Big Bang Theory. Yeah, I mean, can't exactly what. There was one big rock, and then all yeah. of a sudden we're perfect. And where did that rock come from? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, so it's just impossible. Mm. So there is, you know, they say that where there's a, a, um, a building, there's, there was a builder, where there was a painting, there was a painter, where mm. there was an engineer, there was an engineer. Mm. I say that where there's creation, there was a creator. That's it. That's my mm. belief. So, and that's a good thing to believe because it, 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 creation means to create. And he's given us the power of the mind to use. And our subconscious, by the way, there's the mind and the subconscious. Now, the subconscious does not know the difference between what's real and what's not, but it takes everything as a fact. Mm. Like you just said, the wheel, the white, and the gold. The subconscious is working, and that's why then you start to respond, and you said, I feel good, I felt... And that's the key. To think that I was going to... I was already healed of cancer was making me feel great. Mm. To think that I was healed of cancer, one day I was going to share the story of how I beat terminal cancer, made me feel great. Mm. And then the more you feel good, the more... It starts to happen and manifest. Mm. But going back to the karma, because we've like 
both of us are, are guys and we love our mm. cars and toys. And Italians. And Italians, of course. So that's why I said Ferrari. But you also got to visualise that you're inside that car. Mm, that's it. Oh, wow. Yeah, that's a good yeah. point. So you've got to visualise behind that wheel, mm. the sound of the Mustang, the V8. Mm. And I've got a V8, like Merck, and that's how yeah. I know. Yeah, that V8. You've got to visualise that. Mm. And it will happen. I promise you, Liam, if you visualise that, you write it down and you put down the colour, everything, and this is the, your listeners, whatever they want in life, mm. whatever they want, mm. write it down, believe it, and then see yourself in, in that, mm. whatever it may be. You, 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 just everything. You know, I hear things like people saying, you know, I visualise myself going to deposit a million dollar cheque or seeing a bank balance of, of two million. Visualise that. It might sound impossible, impossible, but guess where the word comes from? I am... Possible. I am possible. Mm. So it's not impossible. It is possible. It's only possible if you give up. And yeah. You don't believe it. I love the the concept of the you know you using utilizing these words mm. in in a positive way. Like even the word problem is come from the words in Latin words pro blema, which is propel forward, which is a, which yeah. means you you're meant to be propelled forward. So problems on a negative thing. It's a positive thing. So if, I guess where I'm coming from in that situation is that when you're actually, a, you think positive, you're going to see a positive in the situation where you think negative. Like you, I see, I see problem as a positive thing, so That's I right. see propel forward. Where someone sees a po- problem as a bad thing, so like I've got a problem. Does that make sense? It, so uh, it's like where does that totally see you? Yeah. So do you think before you do the visualisation – you have to start working on your mindset to be um, positive and uh, for all aspects? Like you can see the light side of things in all aspects or do you think that you just should build your confidence from setting a goal that you want to visualise something, even if it's something small, like I want this black pen in front of me and then I'm like, I've got it. Not That was a shit example because it's yeah. in front of me. <laughs> yeah. But you set a goal and then you achieve it mm. and then that's where the confidence of, uh, motion comes from or do you feel as though that you should start to try and cram in as many things positive so then whenever you see things it's always positive and then when you start ma- start visualizing it's always going to be positive or do you reckon just start with one thing well success is a journey right it's a journey so journey means you know along the way and, and can i tell you don't think that everything that happens to me in my life and life is all rosy and that I still, in fact, the more successful you become, the more positive, the more the devil tries to put brick walls in front of you mm. to knock you down. Mm. You know, that, that's what happens. That's just life. That's how you think. So to answer your question, you, you, you know, they call me Mr. Boys. They call me Mr. Miracle Man. They call me everything. But sometimes I, I do get, like, for instance, next week, Christmas Day, I'll go to church and I'll get emotional and I feel down and I'll start to cry. Why? Because I think of my daughter. So... Doesn't matter how positive I am, I will still go through the emotions of feeling like yeah. I wish my daughter was with me. Yeah. You know what I mean? Or I wish my father was around on Father's Day. You know, I, w- I didn't end up telling him that I loved him because he passed away. You know, before I could tell him anything. So, you know, all these things. So, but again, you don't react; you respond. Mm. The key is to write it down. You write daily goals, weekly, monthly, five year, ten year, twenty year goals. Mm. That's that's the key. If you can do that. Mm. And, and and just whatever it is, write it down. Doesn't don't think oh that's oh no, that's too big or I'll never be able. No, don't do that because once you do that, you've already put a brick wall around it. You know, you put a, a limit on yourself. Mm. There is no limit. In fact, I teach young kids and say, listen. Do you know we were born to win? You heard the saying, "Oh, you're born to win." Well, even before you were born, you were the winner, like you and me, Liam. Because let me share something. When you were conceived by your mum and dad. Out of millions and millions and millions and millions of sperm, you're the only one that got through. Mm. You were winning before you were even born. Mm. So it's in our DNA that whatever we set out to do, we've got to accomplish it and finish it. Hence why a baby, when it starts to walk first time, it will fall. It will cry. It will get back up and try again. It will fall. It will leave its head, its head on the corner of the table. It will get a bruise. It will cry for hours, but it will keep going. Hence why we, we learn to walk. Mm. And then when someone, uh, an eight-year-old, seven-year-old, gets on the bike for the first time, same thing. You know, you get on the bike, start riding, you, you wobble, you fall, you, you know, you scrape your leg, you 
break your leg and up, but they'll get back on. Mm. Why? Because as young, we're born with that DNA to whatever we set out to do, we're going to finish it and we won't stop until we do. Mm. But what happens when we start turning 14, 15, 16? All of a sudden, because we're supposedly more educated, we start to hear things, read things, the news, people telling you to you, listen, you'll never get that. That stop dreaming big, you daydream, or it's impossible, or what the world and all of a sudden your mindset. Mm. And hence why then we've got so many suicides of teenagers because they feel that they're failed. Mm. Or there's the image, because someone said you're fat. Or someone said, you know, whatever it is, that's where the bullying comes from. Mm. But you can only be bullied. I get bullied today on, on social media because they look at me, Liam, and they go, hang on. So you're telling me that you went bust, you had suicide, you tried suicide, you had depression, you had terminal cancer, your father died, this, you don't look like you've gone through hell, you look okay. So they think that I'm lying, mm. you know? And, and that's why if you look at my Facebook page, that they'll see photos of when I was in hospital. And all of a sudden people go, oh. Mm. Because they look at you and see, they, 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 they assume things. So I get bullied all the time. You know, I'm, I'm in it to make money and get charity. I've never asked for anyone for even when I was going through cancer. Mm. But I get bullied. But see, I don't react to it. I used to get upset, think, why, why? But then I go, you know what? I know what I'm doing, and I'm out there helping people, and that's what I focus on, and then things will happen. These people, you'll always get people, you know, listen, if you don't want to be successful in life, be mediocre. Stay on the fence, and don't do anything. Mm. Yeah, it's like a march. The majority of people are either side watching it go by. Then there's the people in the march, and then there's a the person at the front who's the leader. I like to be the leader. Yeah. I want anyone to say, follow me because this is where we're going. Mm. And then the majority of people, but unfortunately, life put on either side, just watching it, mm. letting the life go by. Well, it's funny how um, I share these things in the past that I've got to accomplish, not out of boasting or bragging, but I just get to see the life lessons that I've come through at that situation of time uh, after it. And... I guess this, the story I want to share with you is that I caught a young girl, she was 15 years old, trying to, trying to commit suicide. Okay. And pre- previous to that one, I was just going through my personal training business, mediocre, that sort of mindset. Sure. And then, uh, I, but previous to that, when I was like eight years old, I've always wanted to be in the Guinness World Records book. <laughs> you know, you just want, you have that book as a stocking filler as a yeah. kid, a Christmas gift. I'm That's like, it. I just want to be in a book. So mm. I think I tried to grow my fingernails really long, but naturally anxious kid, so I kept biting my <laughs> nails all the time. But then, you know, this thing came at a, at a I guess the, the price that I had to pay um, was this situation and maybe it was the apprenticeship of going through that. Um, since you know, I was eight years old trying to go through that process of you know, how can I get the world records book and then I caught this young girl trying to commit suicide and then I'm like I've got to do something mm. something to help and I decided to set a Guinness world record and I decided to do, do it in boxing because that's what I was that was okay. I wasn't a boxer but I was a I loved doing boxing classes mm-hmm. so I thought oh, let's do a Guinness World Record boxing yeah. class and then went through the whole process of just the manifestation this is why I'm a strong believer in what you're saying mm-hmm. I'm glad that you've gone through this process of telling me this because it's all flooding back to me of all the things in my life of visualization comes at the time maybe a timing thing as well not rushing but you know, doing that Guinness World Record, went through the whole process, getting the World Records people on board, which cost six and a half thousand dollars, then getting suicide prevention on board as a charity. And then while like days into the event, people coming up to me going, You're doing it for the wrong reasons. You're doing it because you you, you want a you want a world record. You don't want to help. I started going into my own thoughts again, like like what the fuck? Like yeah. but I was stronger now than than I was when I was younger to think that, now fuck this, I know what I'm doing for a purpose. But it's funny how what what you know, people trolls on the internet don't, oh. not knowing what you're going through or anything like that. Bullying, bullying, like maybe, I don't know, bullying, but going through the process of, of telling you you can't do something or you've never gone through this process, thou shall not judge, you know, because... That's right. It shouldn't be a... It's like, should, 
And is it an Australian thing? I guess that's what I'm coming to. After all that, because I'm days into this thing, I'm doing a charity event, <clears throat> suicide prevention, mm-hmm. trying to break a Guinness World Record because the more people at this World Record event, the more money I donate to charity. It's simple maths. Yeah. But they're thinking, oh, the more pe- you want more people to break a World Record. That's what people are telling me. So I'm like, what the fuck? Yeah. So it's that's all sort of poppy syndrome. Look, unfortunately, is it? Oh, no. yeah, look, it is because I've been to America, um, not, not a, 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 as a speaker, but I've been there as a, you know, a, as a tourist. But one thing I did find out from America to here is that here in Australia, if you're successful, you want to be successful, they'll, they'll try to tear you down. They'll give you next. Why? Time. Where does this come from? I don't I, know. To be honest, I just I can't answer that at the moment. Yeah. I don't know. And how do we change it? Is it is mindset. Mm. Well, well, we like to think that yourself and not we could. I mean, do you know what? Someone I said to a, a while back. I said, you know, I want to change the world. You know, I made that statement. I put it out there to the universe. I want to change the world. Someone asked me then back, well, how are you going to do that? Like it's a big world. I didn't have the answer him at the time, but thinking about it, I found out how mm. I'm going to do it. And that's by if I change you, Liam your mindset, I'm going to change your family. Mm. And by changing your family, I can probably change the street you live in. Mm. Changing that street, you can change a suburb. You change a suburb, you change a city. Mm. Change a city, change a state, change a state, you change a nation. Mm. Once you change that nation, you can change the world. And it all comes back to one person. So that's how you do it. Mm. And we are, unfortunately, that mentality here. Because in America, if you're successful, they say, Liam, what did you do? How did you do it? I want to learn. Mm. Here, if someone who's down and out becomes successful, uh, he must have, yeah, you know, drugs or did something wrong. He's, you know, he, he, that that's the mentality. Oh, there's something behind it. Yeah, oh, yeah something yeah, behind it. Money. That's it. The one light or whatever. Yeah. They don't understand the journey behind it because they see you today. They see your happy face. They see you drive a nice car. They see your nice your watch, rock, whatever it is. And all of a sudden, oh. Like, you're telling me that everything he's went through in four years, he can do that? Mm. That's the mentality. In America, they go, wow, what did you, I want to learn. Teach me. Mm. Peter, teach me. They're ready with a pen. Ready to write down what you do. And that's, I get people on social media that I talk to people all over the world. Sometimes I'm up till four or five in the morning because that's the time factor, right? And it's interesting that people around the world, on the other side of the world, is they're more positive. They're more mindset. It's like, look, I want to learn, Peter. Please, I want to learn. Here, they'll tend to, you got the trolls, you know, unfortunately. But you know what? That's okay. That's okay. Mm. If that's what they're meant to, they're not going to stop me achieving what I want in life. Mm. And that's the difference. Remember, a loser and the winner is that the loser gave it one more shot. Mm. And not, that's what I did. I keep giving it one more shot, one more shot. I'm not going to give up. I don't care how bad things are. I'm going to keep going. And eventually, you win. Mm. You win. But you're always going to have people pull you down. And at schools, I teach them. I say, listen. You've been bullied? Understand one thing. If someone's trying to pull you down, they're already underneath you because mm. you cannot pull someone down if they're above you. So have that mindset to think, well, if they're having to go, that means I'm already above them. Mm. See, it's just a, tweet, a change of mindset can make a difference to your future. Mm. That's all it is. Don't react. Respond. Smile. Yeah. You know, someone wants to call you, you're fat or you I used to get your wog, go back to your country, mm. you know, where's your salami sand? I got that all the time. I, I, I get it, swamp guinea, <laughs> all, the, all these sorts of things. But, I mean, it just, but what do you do? If you mm. react, you say, what did you say? And, 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 start, and unfortunately, society today, that's that's the what they, you know, because they watch it on TV and they want to punch, you know, uh, they hear it all the time and it's planted and they think it's cool mm. to be, you know, to react and, and, and build the bloke. Just, yeah. Smile and walk away. Yeah. Smile and walk away. If you've got a dr- see, dream big and then double it. Have a passion. Have something that will, the way you achieve it, the goal is that big that it scares you, but at the same time excites you. Mm. That Mustang, the nun, you're going to drive and smell that leather and, and that sound. You have that every day. You're going to get it. And you won't detour. Mm. You won't get into drugs and alcohol and all that, what these kids do. Because they have no purpose in life. Yeah. If you have a, if you have a destination to, to, to go to, it's like the nav man. I start, this is where I want to go. Sometimes you take wrong detour. In life, you take a wrong detour. But what happens in, you refresh it and it'll tell you what to do. Go around, might take you a bit longer, but back on the right track. And life's the same. Sometimes you might take the wrong track, wrong, you know, but get back on track. Do you think that there should be, because you, you, you're very much of the subconscious mindset, do you think there should be more 
you know, as I mentioned before, skills and drills around, you know. In schools? Yeah. Or, or just in general? Yeah, like, the, I mean, getting bullied. I, I've done a, I've done this sh- stupidest thing in the in the past, but it was the be- one of the best things for me in terms of being bullied. Mm. I had four people sitting in front of me at this workshop. So I used to lo- I loved going to workshops. So I'd love to go to your workshop in the future when it is. Sure. Um, and I had four, I think four or six people around me and they and I sat in the middle of like a semicircle. And one person uh, said to me, you know, each each one of these four four people represented s- some form of negativity in my mind. That's a reoccurring voice that always happens, mm. or some bullying that happens uh, that's happened in the past. So you're you're number one. I'm two. Number three. Number four. Number one, uh, you represent um, someone who's you know called me pasty white redhead in the past. <laughs> You know, yeah. You, know, you represent someone. You're you're gonna you're 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 not gonna make it. You're 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 and num- number three, you're weak. Uh, number four, you're a piece of shit. Whatever it is, and you sit there and you have to hear hear them all coming at you at once. It's like a physical representation of what's going on in your own mindset. Does that makes sense. So you're coming at me going, you pasty white redhead, and this person here going, you weak piece of shit. You weak piece of shit, and then. This is constantly going in the background. This is what I find fascinating. This is going in the background of people's mindsets all the time, right? To hear it out loud, and I'm like, what? That yeah. sounds so stupid. <laughs> like, Again, you're responding, not reacting. Exactly right. So I'm That's saying, right. like, if we have those drills more in high school to prepare you for bullying, like, it teaches me now, like, give me a worse shot, because I think that the stupidest thing, call me Pacey White Redhead. So what? Yeah, it's yeah. What, so what? And, and that, and that's what so I, what? Exactly. That's exactly my point. So mm. what? Respond. They can call me anything they want. Mm. It's not going to affect me if my purpose and my dream is big enough. What I want in life, that someone calling me or, or a name or a wobble, it's it, only if you take it personally because your self-confidence is mm. down. Mm. And then that's the thing with these kids today. Liam, you, we know, listen to the 6 o'clock news every night, read the page, front page, everything is negativity, negativity, negativity. Yeah. Why can't they, have you ever seen, when's the last time on the front page of the Daily Telegraph, someone who's achieved something or that, it's not, it's always in the middle mm. or in some magazine or it's not at the front because it's, the, that news is news, it's bad news. Yeah. Or why? Yeah. You know, as, as Donald Trump says, it's fake news. So, I'm trying to change that. Mm. I, I am trying to. I've got other people working with, you know, and um, talking about my workshop, I just had a recent, um, I, I set up, I did a, a talk at the Novotel um, at the at the Hills, and I had 100, just under 100 people turn up. Wow. And um, and it wasn't a pain thing too, because a lot of times they say, when you, they don't pay, and they come, they, you know, they ask. It was mm. raining that day. It was the day after Melbourne Cup. Mm. So every reason not to turn up, but mm. I had, because I wanted to hear my story. Mm. And I had such a great response, such a great response from people, personal messages, that I've decided that in, in the new year, um, I want to hold a big one in the city, here mm. in Sydney, and try to hit 250 people or more. But I want to get a couple of other speakers. So mm. if there's anyone out there listening to this, your followers, that have, have got a good story, mm. they can contact me because I want to get a couple of speakers on and then obviously I'll be the last one, just mm. to, they can share their story, an yeah. inspirational story. Mm. But we both know Sheena. And going back to the Bondo radio, when I did the Bondo radio, I remember she made me laugh. She just said, I know your story. You know, she, like she's in the, she said, I want you to come and do a, a, an eight-week program. Mm. And I reckon you should call yourself the man in the white coat because we're talking about cancer, what I thought yeah. about chemo and that. You know what, Liam, I thought about it and I thought, you know what, I, I don't want to just come across about the cancer and the chemo. And that. I, did, I, I want to send a message to everyone who listens to me. Mm. So I decided to call it the David and Goliath show yeah. for that reason, that David, being a 17-year-old skinny kid, was told it was impossible, this Goliath has never been beaten, he was unbeatable, mm. and he was a massive guy like The Rock, you know, you know the, the, the actor, The Rock, yeah. and the, the wrestler, and then you got this teenage kid, and they're saying, no one's ever been, been able to beat this guy, Goliath. So what makes you think? And he said, I will beat him. I will just, and he did. Mm. And he become king. That's the story in the Bible. But the 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 bottom line is that the modern story is that we all face a Goliath in our life. I've faced six, seven of them, mm. and I've slayed each one. I've beaten each one, and that's the attitude that we all and I've got, we've got to teach, not just the young kids, but 
our age, mm. you know, in, in adults. You will face a Goliath in your life. You will. Big, small, whatever. But you can be the David and beat it. Mm. You will. If you don't have a Goliath net, one day you will. And you've got to learn how to beat it. You've got to have that belief. Because David believed. It wasn't just, I'll do it. He's, he knew. He visualized that he would kill Goliath. And he did. Mm. And, and that's why it's so important, going back to mindset, everything comes back to your mind. Mm. Everything. Mm. Everything. There's not one thing that happens in your life that you don't react or respond to that doesn't start from your mindset and how your attitude will determine your altitude in your life. And that's it. Yeah, yeah that's it. That's so simple. Awesome. Yeah. So, I mean, but, you know, I'm trying to, kids is our future. I'm a big believer that our kids are our future. Mm. I said that earlier in the program. And we've got to get them right. You know, people say to me, well, you know what, Pete, isn't the world in a mess? Like, when you're, isn't it a mess? And I say to them, no, the world's not in a mess. The world was never in a mess, and the world will never be in a mess. But guess what? It's the people who messed up. Mm. That's the difference. Not the world. Mm. It's the people. And you have a look, honestly, with terrorism and, and what's happening. I mean, look at Paris. I mean, what they did during the week. It's that pack mentality. It's that... You know, and what I don't understand, William, is that even here when they have rights, they cover their face. And I'm a believer that if you're fighting for something, a belief, why are you cover yourself for? Yeah. I'm Peter DePringer. This is what I believe. Mm. And and that's it. Tell the world, right or wrong, stand up for what you believe in. But they've covered their face because deep down they don't believe in what they're doing. Mm. It's just a pack mentality. A lot of us are sheep. Mm. We're followers, mm. we're not leaders. Yeah. True. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, I'm trying to make a lot more leaders. Yeah, man, I, I think we should finish on that one. That's been it's been an awesome conversation Thank here. You. Very pleasure insightful. Thank you for inviting me. Been absolute pleasure. We've got to finish up anyway because our cameras went dead. Oh no! So <laughs> we're still on air though, so people yeah, can okay. still hear us. Cool. But this is the beauty of these things. Um, yeah. It, and I guess the reason why I mention those things, I, I would usually hold myself to a, a higher standard of professionalism, but. I also thought in the past of something like this happening, you know, and Fantastic. in terms of us being in here, having a great conversation, you know, and and or, or what made me limiting this is is having uh, trying to limit the mistakes from happening. And I think there's no problem with having having mistakes in your life. Mm. Just fucking roll with it, that and that's what just happened there. So that's just roll an, with it. That's right. just an yeah, example. Give up. Keep going. Don't give up. I mean, they're still on air, so it doesn't really matter anyway. It's just the last three minutes of the conversation. It's all good. It's all good. We and that's the other. So again, you didn't react. Oh my god, mm. the camera let's stop. No, you said, you know what? But we keep going. Please. We keep going. I, been, fine, I think yeah. more people should hear your message. It's been an absolute privilege. Thank you so much. I've been actually saying for the last couple of days how excited I am. My partner, my partner's dad, I had a coffee with him this morning. Okay. Um, yeah, someone I looked up look up to. I've told my parents about you in the past. So Thank you. 250 people in the city, uh, you know, in, in the in New Year, yeah, yeah, probably around February, March. I'm looking at maybe the West End somewhere there. You yeah, know, okay. The city. Well, so a lot of people around this area have asked me to to yeah. come here because the hills seems to be a bit far for them to drive. Yeah, but yeah, so that's cool. Hit that's cool. hit me up and I'll see if I can get yeah. down there. During the week's usually harder for me, but I'll, I'll see if I can make it. during the week during the day. No problem. But after work or during the weekends, I can yeah. I can generally love get down. I'd love, I'd love to support. I'd love Thank to bring you. a couple of yeah. people. Yeah, oh, look, I'm trying to you know the message out there to help people. That's what I'm trying to do. You know. Yeah. So never give up. If I can help more people think that way and have that mindset, yeah. we'll have a much better, you know, life and world around us. You know. Yeah. So rather than all this hate and destruction, you know, yeah, exactly trying to right. change your mindset. Awesome. Thank you, and you keep Thank doing you, that. Man with purpose. Thanks everyone listening. Thank you so much. Thank you.